the decision to leave the EU was in 2016. And if we remember what happened in the build up to three years ago, most of us could not believe what was happening was that the vote had gone through and it was going to be overturned. It was, you know, the, the deals that were presented like Theresa May, everybody felt as though there was a sellout, that the establishment just wouldn't let us leave one way or another. And that actually was the thing which I think set in the bitterness because so many people I know who voted Remain had accepted the vote in 2016, but they were almost like stirred up into believing it could all be overturned and this was a terrible decision and all those Brexiteers were all stupid anyway and they didn't understand. And so the deal that we got, and this is where we get onto the economy bit, the deal that we got in a way was a desperate attempt to get any kind of a deal to get us out. And there was no doubt there was major compromises made. Everybody, uh, I, I certainly know that GB News viewers will be sympathetic to this, that the fishing communities did not do as well as they'd been led to believe they would. And the Northern Irish situation still allows six counties of Northern Ireland to stay within the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, which is I, basically I don't know if you were able to. I don't know if you were able to watch the programme yesterday, but we had a genuinely fascinating discussion uh, on that very issue with friends uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, one is the leader of the Conservatives in Northern Ireland uh, and the other is the uh, boss of the Federation of Small Businesses there, both of whom were optimistic that progress could be made and that those stories that broke out during the week, that there may be some progress on this, it may actually be happening. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm more pessimistic. I think the Northern Irish oh. protocol itself is a problem and needs to be got rid of. And if you talk to anyone, or I, certainly when I talk to, you know, Kate Hoey and, and members of the DUP, they are uh, convinced that unless we get rid of the protocol, the res resolution won't be there because it will be about the European Court of Justice having jurisdiction over uh, parts of uh, uh, the United Kingdom. Now, the, but but uh, the reason I was stressing that was not to just dwell on that particular issue, was that it was a bad deal, but we should remember, it well, certainly wasn't as good a deal as one might have wanted, but you've got to remember that nobody was trying to get a good deal um, from 2016 onwards. It was almost willful, you know, the vote, all sorts of prevarications occurred. And so I think that most of us were prepared to take and I do, you know, say this uh, with some heavy heart to take the deal that would get us over the line to get us out of the European Union. That was some achievement because people had been worn down. And I remember in 2018, I, actually, before I, the, one of the reasons I decided to stand for the Brexit Party in those European elections was I suddenly dawned on me, oh, my God, we're not going to ever leave the European Union. Now, what I think has happened is that that opportunity has been squandered because having got over yeah. the line, um, Boris Johnson did have that massive majority, but that sense of a democratic dynamism that mm. came from the largest democratic vote in, in the UK's history that would lead people to feel that not only the, you know, the, the taking back control was not just Britain taking back control, but it was ordinary people's capacity to take back control of politics. And to have a moment where their democratic rights were taken seriously, not left behind or patronised or condescended to. Yeah. And I do feel as though that hasn't in any way been realised.